the Columbus Blue Jackets, Team USA, are Stanley Cup champions. We defeated the Nashville Predators in the prior episode. Brent Timmons and company putting up one hell of an effort, but let's be honest, it was really Brent Timmons. We have won the Stanley Cup. We have accomplished our goal. Again, the streak is broken. And yes, while we are using uh, the the easiest nation, we'll say, so far, of course, when you look at this compared to a Sweden, when you look at this compared to Nations United as far as using smaller nations together, obviously, this was the series in which we had the best chance, but it was hardly a lock that we were going to have as good of a season as we did. It was hardly a lock that we were going to actually go all the way and win the damn Stanley Cup. Of course, we were down three games to two in that series. We had to win the last two. We did just that. What a run it was. And for now, we're going to look at continuing this run. Mainly because of Brent Timmons. I want to see what this guy is capable of moving forward. So, much like with the Ottawa series, we are on a season-by-season basis as far as how long uh, we're probably going to be continuing this series, of course, before we really start putting all of our focus into the new Buffalo and Milwaukee series. So, we will see... Now, what happens, I imagine I was supposed to look at defensemen. That's what I'm going to set it up as. Uh, not that many Americans come out of the queue, but that is okay. I should probably check contracts. We also have the decision to make, of course, as to whether or not uh, we trade or keep Brock Besser. I suppose it really depends on what the draft looks like and whether or not we have any half-decent prospects available. As far as expiring deals, it's shaping up to be a little bit tough of an off season. Hughes needs a contract, Reimer needs a contract, uh, and Brent Timmons, uh, not yet. No, Brent Timmons is going to need a deal too. Oh boy, oh boy. This could be fun, if not painful. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Uh, the plan is to make it through at least this entire offseason in this episode. So let's get down to business, let's get to the draft, and we'll see what we can do. As we have the 13th overall pick, thanks to the San Jose Sharks. Calgary, Montreal, and Dallas are the top three. So we do have a pick in the top end of the draft. Of course, if I'm not mistaken, we still have plenty of draft picks as well. Moving forward, we're not losing anybody to retirement, which is a good sign. Around the league, James Reimer calls it a day. Nearly 400 wins for him. James Reimer finished with more wins than Tuka Rask. Well then. I'll take things that I never expected for 300, Alex. Uh, also, Rask had more wins than Bishop, but a lot more games played. So, funny how that works. And then on the defensive side of things, Eric Carlson, more than 1,000 career points. Good Lord. Retires at an 88 overall while still being, uh, or while at 36, while still being an 88 overall. Uh, man, Kane and Kessel also put up over 1,000 points. Craziness. Craziness. Uh, let's do this, though. Draft time, we'll see who we have available. Of course, we have managed to put together some decent drafts in recent years. We will see what is in store for us here. So let's take a look at the top five to start. Are there any Americans? There are. Uh, like and Chow. Julian Like and Joffrey Chow. The Jeffrey Chow. It's Jeffrey, probably. Maybe. Probably Joffrey. Uh, he's, he's looking okay. We know more about him than we know about Like which is unfortunate. Uh, who else do we have in this draft? We have Burroughs, which sounds terrible, but this, uh, different spelling at least. Not looking at the highest overall. Anybody else? Wagner, which we don't know enough about. So there are some players, but they would certainly uh, be risky pickups. We have Abraham Waugh, who in first and second round is not terrible. He should, he should be medium top four at that stage. I'd hope he's not low top four, but I guess there is an outside chance at that. Jonathan Gilbert's also not a guarantee. I'm trying to see if there are any guarantees here because I fully expect to make the majority of our picks. We might trade up, but around the league, of course, we pretty much know uh, that there aren't any players that we're really going to be looking at. So it's pretty much find who we can here. See if there are any guarantees. If there aren't guarantees, then take the risk. The only moves that we might be making 
uh, will of course be if we have to free up some cap space, which there might be a pretty good chance of that happening. Just me not wanting to take the risk with the amount of players uh, that we saw that we had to re-sign. And outside of those top rounds, Justin Clancy, not really a guarantee. Outside of those top few rounds, or those top few, uh, the, the top few picks in the first round at least, it's not looking that good. Uh, we have Gavin Lopez, also not really a guarantee. Colton Stortini, not really a guarantee. Cam Beats, also not a guarantee. And yes, I am self-conscious to know whether or not that guy who just coughed as he passed my window. There's a decent amount of space between my window and the sidewalk, and I could hear him. You could probably hear him too, so that's great. Uh, Kenny Bits, Kenny Bits, decent skater, nothing there. This isn't looking too good. Eric Patoni at 20, I mean, at least we don't know anything about him. So there's a guy in the fourth round, right? So, I mean, that's that's kind of what we're looking at here, is whether or not we want to take any chances. That guy is pissing me off. That's okay, though. Let's see who we have here. If we were to free up cap space, who would we be looking at trading? Goaltenders were fine, although John Gillies, we're probably just going to let him go, because we have Gibson and Wolf, one of whom probably gives him one up being the back of next year. Defensively, oh boy, oh boy, this is going to get expensive quickly, isn't it? Quinn Hughes' contract might be a tad bit too much. McAvoy and Wierenski are both on great money. Ernie's already on five. And really, if you look at it from there, McAvoy, Wierenski, Reimer, Ernie, Blunden, Olsen, and then probably Pellick or Valesi, Quinn Hughes. Not that I want to trade him, of course, because we have his brother on the team, but that is looking like the best option as far as someone that we could get rid of. He's pretty much capped out where he is. He had 10 points in the playoffs, 28 points in the regular season. If we were to get rid of somebody, he would probably be the guy just because of the prospects we have coming up. So that's looking likely. That we'll be getting rid of him. Kachuk and Besser. Oh boy, those contracts too. Those are rough. Wallstrom. Farabee is making a little bit more than I'd prefer, to be honest. And he wasn't a lock in the lineup either. Spinner's on a one-year deal, if I'm not mistaken. Indeed, he is. And Rintoul's on a one-year deal. I think Farabee is probably going to get traded too, just to free up that little bit of space. We have people coming up that could replace him. There's a decent chance we end up having to replace Besser. But I'd say in a way... Uh, that Besser ended up getting a little bit of redemption. You know what? We really need to focus on forwards here because there are some guys we have to get rid of. Uh, we have the 13th pick and the 31st pick. Let's see what we can do in terms of trading up. What is uh, Who is the first team that's looking to move their pick? Calgary has the number one pick. They don't want to move it. Let's find that first team that's willing to do business, uh, if anybody is, of course, and that way we can end up Hopefully with one of those Americans in the top two. Uh, let me sim Calgary's pick. Cowan was not one of the two Americans. Montreal selects Fedoric. Also not one of our two eligible Americans. Dallas isn't looking to move that pick, so we won't even try. We'll sim that. They took like medium elite 81. Now could be worth just trying to go and trade for him immediately. Tampa doesn't want to trade that pick either. Let's go talk to Dallas. Let's see what we can do about Julian Like, I believe it was, uh, who could be an instant replacement uh, for Brock Besser. Really, 81 at 18. Julian Like's looking pretty good. You know, I think I'm going to try to pull that off. It should be easier to trade for the player outright than it would be for the pick. I would have loved to have traded for the pick, but there's just there's way too much value there. So who can we move to pull this off? I mean, I guess first things first, that 13th pick could be involved in this trade, I still say Quinn Hughes is going to have to go to free up some space here, which, again, I'm not happy about because we still have his brother on the team, but you look at who else we have, we need to be a little bit careful with the money. Jack Hughes, Brent Timmons, they need contracts. I think that's the play to make. I mean, Reimer and Ernie are the top four, and then we'll have a younger, I mean, with Blunden and Olsen, or maybe even Pellick. Yeah, Quinn Hughes has to go too. Do they have the cap space for it? They do. We're going to be sending a hell of a package to Dallas here just to pull this off. I'm going to attack on Farabee if I can. That's too far. All right, so we might not be able to move Hughes in this deal. Is there anybody else? I'm also a little bit weary about Parks making that much money. And Greenway, for that matter. There could be a decent amount of roster turnover here. 
Where can we make up some of this value? With our 31st, probably. So first, 31st, and I guess we'll add Quinn Hughes back. This is a hell of a trade that we're trying to pull off here. Should be worth it, though, to have a basically a, a hopeful Besser replacement um, by immediately bringing him in. He's very well-rounded for a sniper, too. Where are we in terms of value? Of course, they don't want to trade him, so it's going to make it a little bit more difficult. Uh, what if I tack on a fourth-round pick in this draft? How does that sound? Rejected. How close are we? Not close enough. They can take on one more contract, I believe. I believe that was the case. Of course, we also have Cairns and Eddie. Eddie's going to be signed for the season, so we can afford to move on from some of these guys who have some questionable contracts. Uh, where is Parks? 82 overall at 24. Seven points in the postseason, 32 points in the regular season, making four million bucks. I'll be happy to move on from that. Actually, they can't take one more... Uh, one more person. We're going to have to use another draft pick here, unless we use an unsigned prospect. Uh, we're not trading Ben DeHaan at the moment. Uh, at least not yet. There's an outside chance of that happening for the future. I'm pretty sure I already got rid of all of our unsigned guys. We just have a bunch of kind of veterans now at this point for the AHL. Uh, what if I use our third round pick? Like, how close are we here? I mean, this is a high price to pay, but pretty much has to be done i'd say I, I don't know if we can actually pull this off to be honest but we need to end up with one of these two or we trade for draft picks next year so it's worth it for us uh, i just i don't think they're going to take this to be honest it's not looking too good two first the second a third and quinn hughes for like right, you know what that's too much that's too much as much as i'd love to get him for this team tampa didn't want to trade their pick they took brown the defenseman. So we still have that one guy on the board. And Arizona, they don't want to trade the pick. All right, well, let's see if they take him. And they didn't. They went off the board and took Wall. Good old Josh Wall. All right, well, we might have a chance here. Vegas wants to trade this pick. They don't, but the value-wise, uh, or just value-wise, you know, it's at a point where we should be able to pull this off. So let's go for Quinn Hughes. And we'll probably have to use our 13th pick from San Jose. We should be able to pull this off. Will that go through on its own? Yes, it will. Not too much to deliberate about. You know, surprisingly, I didn't think that was going to go through straight up. Uh, so we move up, what, seven spots by adding Quinn Hughes? Freed up some cap space. I'm good with it. I might have been able to get a little bit more back, but hey. I don't think, I mean, imagine if some, I mean, someone will now, because I'm pointing this out, if someone complains like, oh my god, you didn't get enough, when all I ever do ever is try to make sure I get as much as possible. So we're, we're putting a little bit of stock in the old Jeffrey Joffrey Chow. I'm going to call him Jeffrey. Good old Jeffrey. Uh, yeah, let's do this. Not going to be as good as the other American option, but we certainly have to give up less to get him, and thankfully certain teams are off the board. Not bad. He is medium elite, but he's a lower overall, so he's more of a project. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Obviously, getting Julian Like would have been great, uh, just because he's immediately NHL ready. There's still a chance that happens if I decide to get rid of Brock Besser. Like, that guy is the main target. And to be honest, we still have our 31st pick in this draft. That might be the case, because there are a couple of guys I want to get rid of to make sure we're good on cap space. Let's take one more look here. So defensively, we're good. We're going to have to hand out probably one more big contract. Yeah, Reimer's going to need that deal. Right wings, actually, let's just look at forwards in general. I think Besser's got to go. We are paying some players some big-time money. I think Besser might have to go. Parks definitely has to go. He's not worth that contract. He really isn't. Paling's definitely worth it. Greenway's okay. Farabee's going to go for someone who got forced out of the lineup. It's just whether or not I want to trade Jordan Greenway. Which, you know, regular season he was okay. He's good as a third line option. I think I might try to keep him. I think ideally I'd try to keep, you know, Besser as well. I'm just worried about our ability to afford it. But freeing up, you know, almost $7 million in cap space here would be tremendous. So who has the space and who has the funds to be able to afford these guys, the Minnesota Wild, which is great, of course, moving them out to the Western Conference. I'll look to get draft picks back in return. 
They actually have the 17th pick in this draft. I might be able to get that. Oh, Bull, you would have too many players. Here, yeah, you know what? Screw it. Just let me... Let me tack somebody on to this deal, shall we, with an expiring deal, please? Nick Shore. And we'll just outright release him. How close are we to a deal? If at all. Hopefully we are. And let's just tack that on, because why the hell not? What do you say? Rejected. How about now? More of the same players for similar spots. Bull. Bull. We're, we're doing this deal. I don't care what you... I don't care what you think there, Minnesota. We're doing this deal. Come on. We're doing this deal. I'm getting that pick. Don't make it more difficult than it has to be. This is going to happen. Because I need this, that Minnesota. Why? Why? Why must you? Why must you do what you do? Why do you do the things that you do? Son of a bitch. All right. Well, I'm not going to be able to get much of a return here. Uh, parks for that first obviously isn't going to happen. How about your second round pick next year and a fourth round pick this year? What do you say to that? I'll take that. All right, so Parks is off to Minnesota, and we'll try to move Farabee out to Los Angeles or maybe even Florida. Again, just to free up some cap space. We're looking good, but I know the Timmons and Hughes contracts are going to be big-time deals. As a second-round pick, going to work here. I mean, if we can get a second-round pick for Joel Farabee, we're laughing to the bank right now. Second and a fourth. Rejected. Just the second? Sweeten it just a touch. I am, I'm good with that. We have... Two seventh-round picks that I am more than all right with getting rid of. Is that just a touch? Yes, it is. Beautiful. So, we have a lovely $14 million in cap space, which is pretty solid. Now, of course, you can argue in terms of these big-time cap hits. Again, Greenway is the one that I'm really keeping an eye on, but I'd say the more controversial one's probably Kachuk at $8 million. Whether or not he's worth that. I mean, he put up 12 points in the postseason, had a 50-point season this year. And then Besser had 14 points in the postseason, 57 points. So, you know, I just don't know if Brock redeemed himself, but now would be the right time to move out either one of those two. Because again, for expiring contracts, we're going to have to worry about Jack Hughes, which again, he's going to be looking for at least 9 to probably 10, 11. So that's, that's going to be rough. You might have to... I mean, really, though... Okay, so let's say we have $12 million in cap space if he asks for $11 million, right? You have Ernie who's going to ask for 6 or 7 I still... Yeah, I, I think we have to move somebody else out. I really do. To afford Ernie, Hughes, and Timmons. So it comes down to Besser or Kachuk, and we're pretty much going to commit to making a deal with Dallas... For the guy they just drafted. So we're going to have an instant replacement. It's kind of cheap. But they do get the better player now. Uh, so I'm okay with it. I mean really they're just getting a better player. Who's further along in their development. Oh Kachuk or Besser. Kachuk or Besser. Did Besser redeem himself. This was the game plan. To trade him now. This is when he was supposed to go. <sighs> Let's take a look here. I mean, again, I, uh, I don't know. Brock, you were supposed to be one of the faces of this series at a certain point. I meant to click in the right stick. I want to take a look. Did he redeem himself? A 39-point season. Now back-to-back 57-point seasons. And then if we look at Kachuk again, how has he done? I think, I mean, again, he had that 60-point season in Pittsburgh. He's only put up 50 points once. You know, I think they're probably both worth getting rid of. I don't know. I mean, obviously, Kachuk has... I mean, granted, both are okay defensively. Kachuk has the physical edge and the defensive side of his game, but $8 million bucks. I think that's too much. And considering we won the Cup, I think both are probably going to go, and we're going to look to build up around other players. The problem is, again, I just don't remember if there are any solid American players. I'm going to trade... Brady Kachuk here. I'm going to try to trade him to Dallas. We'll see how good of a return we can get. Are either of these other two Americans? Probably not. No. We'll take a look around the league and see if we can find anybody else. Uh, draft pick wise, though, it's tough. We might be at a loss here, draft pick wise. I don't think they're going to want to give up that pick. Let's just see how close we are. 
Like a first and a second? No. How about like and a first? They're not going to want to trade that first round pick. Let's go second, third, and a second down the road. I'm probably going to be losing on value in this deal just because of the situation with them not wanting to trade picks, but it's freeing up the cap space and being safe that I'm okay with. So Kachuk for like, two seconds, two thirds. Didn't go through. Two seconds and a third? Still didn't go through. What if we take out the other third? You have to be kidding me. <laughs> okay. Right. They're going to be difficult about this. Let's try a second and two thirds. Of course, them not wanting to trade these, uh, you know, these items don't help. Or doesn't help. Okay, this is ridiculous. Like in a second? You have to be. Sweeten it just a touch. You are on drugs. If you think I'm giving up any more. Oh my god. Alright, let's do a fourth and a fifth this year. And your next two third round picks. I'll do it, whatever. We get somebody back, half decent. And we also free up cap space. You are shitting me. Will that go through? Thank you. Congratulations, Dallas, for completely robbing me blind. Uh, congrats. <laughs> G fucking G. Um, let's look for forwards. This is normally where I jump cut, but hey, at least you'll get to see what some of these teams are looking like at this point. Do we have any high-value players that we could target as a better replacement now that Kachuk is gone? Not Austin Matthews, not Marty Reed. Let's take a look. Cowan? Nope. What about Laleem or Hoagland? No, of course not. Carolina, Svechnikov, I wonder. Uh, anybody else? Barzal? No. Evans and Radish? No. Well, Evans? No, Canadian. Anybody else? Byers, DeNicolo, of course we already looked. Detroit has nobody. We might have to try and hold on to a Besser at this point. I skipped Edmonton accidentally. Yakubov, boy, I wonder if he's American. He's Canadian. Totally would have guessed that. McDavid, uh, Kyle Connor, Aginla, Swiss. Uh, let's check this top four. Anybody? Boy, yeah, we're in a tad bit of trouble here, aren't we? Look at Montreal, by the way. Drafted all the Canadians. That's very unmarked Bergevin like. The Islanders, Pierce and Dubois. Again, I really don't want to have to look for a defenseman because we don't need one. Lorenz. But at this point, we might not have a choice. Pagadawan or Pagadawan. Oh my god, Pittsburgh. Yeah, Jesus, man. Pittsburgh's stacked right now. Schwartz and Hischier. Hellenius. Don't know how he ended up being that good. Zancanero's not going to work. Yeah, I think we're pretty much screwed. In terms of having fair value to trade for. Unless we were to sit here and be like, well, I hope this guy's half decent in the future and just, you know, or I hope this team sucks next year and trading for an option like that. There isn't a single forward that's worth trading for. That is astonishing. What about Ron Burgundy's brother here? No, nope, that's not going to work either. There has to be somebody, right? Maybe? This thing, though, even if I trade for a defenseman, I'd want him to be more of a project defenseman as opposed to being ready now because we already have players... <laughs> Who are ready now? This was the problem. This is why I'm shocked that we won. Because, again, it's kind of an issue right now. The players that we have available to us. We had to do well drafting, and we, we have done so. Um, yeah, we're pretty much screwed here. After certain players uh, in these drafts didn't exactly pan out for us. Or uh, certain already established players. The Matthews, the Bessers, guys like that. Uh, we need to have a little bit of luck. And, uh, well... It happened. We found success as a result, but I think we're pretty much screwed here in terms of anybody else that we can get. So, unless Benaral guarantees Canadian, I'm not even going to bother looking. And Gunnarsson, of course. All right. So, unfortunately, I can't see records here anymore. Oh, boy. The best I can do is look at certain rebuilders, like Tampa. Is there a rebuilder in the West that I can hope is going to be terrible next year, and that way I can just trade for their first round pick next year and hope? Oh, go figure. Dallas. We've already kind of made a deal with them, though. What is even going on outside? What is even? What is even? 
I don't live next to the train yard, but I'm starting to be concerned. Um, our only option here is Dallas. <laughs> we already traded them Kachuk. Do we really want to hope that they're going to be that bad? I think we kind of have to. And the problem is I don't think that they're going to be that bad, especially if we trade them Besser. Uh, but we don't have any other options. So to free up cap space, we're going to make another deal with the Dallas Stars. And then with all of these draft picks, we're going to hope to get lucky. Because again, we have, well, we do have 21 million now. So let's say, I mean, God, though, if Hughes is 10, yeah, we have to. I have to play it safe. Well, then again, if Hughes is 10, that would technically be 20 million. Timmons, say he asks for 10, that would technically be 13. We might actually be okay without trading Besser right now. Maybe. Possibly. Mm. Or we can just get rid of him. I mean, at least with Kachuk, it made sense because we get a ready replacement for him. I think I'm going to hold on to Besser for the moment. Cap space-wise, I think it'll work out now, as is. And again, if we look there, so say, you know, Timmons was making three. Say he gets bumped up to ten. So that's a $7 million difference. We'll say we have $14 million left in cap space. If um, if Hughes goes from like nine to ten million, of course, you know we're still we're good. We should be fine. I'm gonna hold on to Besser for the moment, considering there aren't any other high level prospects. Uh, we're just gonna have fun with the draft from this point on, and we're gonna hope to get a tad bit lucky. So let's see what we can do here. Let's have some fun, risk some of these draft picks, and hopefully we can end up with some steals. Now, as far as Americans go. Uh, we're already going to have to go off the board. Mm. You know, I think that changes my plans already. Because uh, I could drop down to the second round and select Gilbert. And there's that goaltender as well. Humphreys is terrible. What picks do we have left here in the first? Just ours? Okay. Uh, let me let me talk to old Colorado here. Say we're the worst team in the league. They don't want to trade the pick. Of course they don't. That would be too easy. Montreal or Tampa? Do you want to trade the pick? Thank you, Montreal. Let's let's work out a deal here. So you can move up a spot, two spots to be correct, to be factual, and uh, we'll take a little bit of a, a little bit of compensation. How about just a fourth? Okay, you're being ridiculous. How about a sixth? Please move up two spots. Give me that extra sixth round pick. That way I don't have to reach that far. Thank you very much. So. Let's go ahead now and uh, see who we get here, shall we? Not expecting great things, but you never quite know, I suppose. So again, we have Gilbert projected for the second round. Uh, Campagna, the Campagans, who is not looking that good. Might be medium starter, but we really don't need him. Could be a future backup for us, though. And then Humphreys isn't worth it at all. And that's pretty much it. Foy is terrible. Might be a half-decent overall, but the potential is obviously going to be garbage. Prosser, not expecting good things from him. The skating is solid. He might be a half-decent medium top six potential. Stu Cools? Oh, Stu Cools. Damn it. We might have to take him. We might have to take him. All right, let's uh, let's take the risk with old Jonathan Gilbert here. Let's hope he's medium top six. He is hot garbage. <sighs> well, you know when I said I wanted to have fun? <laughs> wow, that goalie's garbage too. Okay. Well, so much for the fun factor so far. Let's uh, let's just really start looking for kind of cheesy, kind of guarantee steals here. So, Foy, nah. Stu Cools, I'm tempted, buddy. I'm tempted, but I don't trust it. Who else do we have? Clancy. Justin Clancy. We know nothing about you. You're 18. Get out of here. Pascale. Not going to trust that to be half decent. We have Cook. Low nine. I might take the risk on you. Who else? We have Lopez. No thank you. Stortini, no thank you. Patolni was 20. I am... Mm. Oh, my God. It's just nothing but traffic on this street at this time of day. I don't understand it. Uh, Bits. Kenny Bits. Could be a half-decent overall. We'll probably take the risk with him. Tanaka is 18, a complete unknown. Might not be might not be that big of a 
a risk, but still, is there anybody better? Tiny man. If he wasn't gonna be garbage, I would I would select him just for the memes of the name. Tiny man. Jim Henderson. We have Hillen. Ooh, Hillen. He's 20 years old as well. Solid option. Anybody else? Chuko. No, thank you. Marlo. No, thank you. Tambellini. No, thank you. Actually, Tambellini. What's overall or attributes? Yeah. Siolfato. Ooh. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Reggie. Reggie. Siolfato. Chilfato. Reg. Yeah, Reg is, Reg is going to be a draft pick of ours, I'd like to think. And we got good old Luke Friggin. Not going to happen, though. Yes, I know the clock's running. Uh, green. 17 will pass. Uh, anybody else? We have Denny. Theo Denny. You're going to be terrible. Uh, Purcell. You're probably going to be terrible. Wingles. You're probably going to be terrible. Uh, Conboy. Conboy? 18. Eh. What about Wallace? Kenny Wallace. Nothing too special there. We have Cheng. 19. Eh, might be worth it. I just want to see. I can't mark any more players, though. Daniel Roy could also be half decent. All right, so let's see who we mark so far. I'm not afraid to go off the board here and just select who I think is actually going to be good. Uh, so the next option here would be in the third round, Abraham Cook. He's a complete unknown. Uh, let's take the risk on old Abe, and he is also terrible. Right. So it's a good thing that we've been uh, employing the strategy of just letting other people select for us and then trading for those players because so far, not so good when actually making our own selections. I talked about how we've been half decent before. Uh, not at the moment. <laughs> not at the moment. Uh, fourth round would be next. Bits. <sighs> God, the overall might be half decent though. Then we have Patalny. How many more draft picks do I have in total? Just to... Just to play it safe, because there are also players, of course, you know, outside of projection that we haven't looked at yet. While wow, we have a lot of the third round and a lot of the fourth round. Okay, so we can afford to take a risk on some of these players that are closer to, uh, like, their projected draft spot. So we're looking okay. Uh, let's look at the marker again for pinned players. And... I think I'm going to take the risk on Eric Patalny being 20. Let's see what we get with the defenseman. Nah. Nah. Just a big old Mav a pick, and then Pittsburgh does that. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, that's always nice for you. Just to rub it in your face with a with an option like that. It's like, here you go, idiot. That's what you get for handcuffing yourself for the sake of a series. That's what you get. <sighs> Bits is overall could be half decent, but it's the potential. I mean, unless he's high top nine. I'm going to hold off, though. Uh, we're aiming higher than that. Like with Damian Hillen. That's going to be my next pick. Oh, boy. Right. Well, let's hope that Siofato, Siofato, Siofato is, uh, is everything we ever dreamed that he was. <laughs> he was by far uh, the best looking option. Goddamn Stu Cools. Some of these names are just tremendous this year. All right. Big Reg. You're only six foot, but we're calling you Big Reg. Shout out to Reginald Chung. Have a good feeling about this one. Mmm. Medium 9, but he's a 75. That's a whole lot of nothing special. He's very close to being... I mean, eh, he could be a bottom 6 guy for us. I'm not complaining about that, but... I don't know. Obviously, with us not having like a major steal at this point in the draft, eh, that kind of that stings a little bit. Just a little bit. Let's go back to the seventh round. Uh, that's where we we're looking at the next few guys here. All right, who do we have? So Denny was going to be terrible. Purcell was probably going to be terrible. Wingles as well. Conboy was a complete unknown. We have Wallace. Uh, might be worth it, might not be. I mean, he's he's worth a, a random selection here. We have Cheng. 19, or Chung, perhaps. Um, eh, might also be worth the random selection just because. Uh, Saborin, 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 not looking that good. Uh, we have Daniel Roy, or Daniel Wah, perhaps. Who's looking pretty good. And McGinn's kind of a toss-up. 
Booma, 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 Booma. Not looking that good. Wow, this is this is not what I was hoping for out of this draft. And then we get into undrafted players. So let me take a look at pinned options again. We have what four, or do we have the full five? We only have three. Jesus. Uh, let's go ahead and take old Daniel Roy here. See what we can get from the 19-year-old. Hmm. That is that is unimpressive. <laughs> this is. It's a good thing we made our major moves early on because this has been an unimpressive draft, to say the least. We'll take the next risk with old Wallace here. Kenny Wallace, the 18-year-old. I'm expecting medium top nine and meh. Low top nine and also meh. I don't think there's a single player. Oh, no, it's the Olfido. We'll sign him. We'll sign him. Everybody else, though, mm, it's not looking too good now, is it? There's got to be one steal here that can make all these picks worth it. We really had nobody else to trade for anyway. Julian Chang, the grinder. Julian, how good are you? You're not. This is shaping up to be one of our worst drafts ever. Or at the very least, a very, very meh draft, which is the only way to put it. Let's take a look at overall potentials. And then we'll try, also try to find some uh, unscouted guys. So Saborin, Friggin, Tambellini. Good old Friggin' Tambellini. Uh, Bits also isn't looking that good. Jesus, this is not our draft. We have Tanaka in the fourth round, who was meh. Conboy, Davies. Wayne Davies is 20, so that's it's at least worth taking the risk there. McGinn, Wingles. Who else do we have? Booma gonna be somebody else right <laughs> this is really shaping up to be an awful draft for us and then we get in the goaltenders henderson karkner chuko cam beats no we have man good old tiny man shout out to tiny man purcell this has been terrible all right well we might actually be trading away some of these draft picks i'm going to make that next selection We'll, uh, we'll search through some other options. The most scouted. We're going to take Wayne Davies, the 20-year-old sniper from the Windsor Spitfires. And, I mean, he's okay. 72 is pretty good for a 20-year-old. But, again, not a crazy potential. This has not been good for us. We have the last pick of the third round. If we can't find anybody from this point on, uh, we'll just trade away all these picks for picks next year. Hope to get lucky that year rather than this one. So let's see, times scouted, we have Ruchin, who is quite meh. We have Hayes, who is also quite meh. And a whole lot of nothing. Denny's not looking that good. What about Blunden? Bruce Blue, Bruce Blunden, 20 years old. Some decent greens there. All right, uh, what about Ivani? Ethan Ivani. Might also be worth a risk, but probably not. <laughs> Admittedly, probably not. We have Monroe. The old Rick Monroe, who's not worth taking. Uh, Peterson? Dennis Peterson? Nope. This is not good. What about Celios? Also not good. You know? It's not the draft I was hoping for. Gavin Oshie. Meh. Well, Scalina. We're getting towards the uh, the bottom of the list here, to be honest. It's not looking good for us at this point. What about Boss? Chuck Boss! Good old Chuck Boss. Uh, not worth selecting, though. Anybody else? We have Kane, the Enforcer. Rory Kane, 20-year-old Enforcer. Uh, we'll take him for the hell of it. We have Graham, 19 years old. Decent skating, decent shot blocking. Lee Graham, I think, will also be... A selection. Torres isn't worth it. We're getting towards the end of the list here. Raymond Faith. Not overly terrible. What about Corbin? Some 70s there as well. Chris Corbin. You know, we, 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 might, we might find somebody in this group. If we can find even one player in this group at this point. And of course, I could trade down from these third and fourth round picks for like sevens and get even more value out of it. I mean, who cares at this point? And I think we're good as far as available players. 
We have Gordon. I know I have 50 seconds left. We have Lorenz. Okay, we're not good. Or we're not good because we have Ted Lorenz. Hold on. Oh, God. Oh, God. All right. Three times scouted. I have 40 seconds here. 40 seconds. Focus in. So, Buma wasn't that good. Gordon wasn't that good. Uh, anybody else? We have Lorenz, who we can't mark down, so I'll probably just take him. We have Irons. Okay, yeah, we still have some players to draft. Let's take Lorenz here for the hell of it. And he was another medium top nine. <laughs> just nothing but medium top nines. He was a 62. Good lord. And we also had the first pick of the fourth round, because of course we do. This has been a longer video than I planned already. We haven't even gotten through the rest of the offseason. How does that always happen? I don't get it. That always happens. Uh, let's look back at time scouted now that we have that short list of five and see if there was anybody else that we uh, looked at in the three times scouted range that could be worth the selection. Let's see here. So again, Estelle's is ineligible. Gordon's kind of trash. Boma's not that good. Moss isn't that good. Bits, Smobby. I think that was about it. Demarshi. Uh, Darcy DeMarshi. Amazing. 19, though, and not looking that good. Dingle Irons. Joe Irons at 20. Eh, it's not looking like he's going to be that good. Might still be worth the selection. Oh, Calder. Eh, the Enforcer at 19. No thank you. What about Lynn? Another Enforcer. No thank you. And then good Branson. Uh, let's go ahead and, I guess, take the risk on Joe Irons, maybe? No. No, let's not. He's not that good. Famous last words. Famous last words. Let's go ahead. And uh, I guess we'll take the enforcer. Rory Kane, 20-year-old. He'll be our next selection. Low top six and a 58. That's unfortunate. 17th pick of the fourth round. Can we find anybody else here? We have these, uh, these last four options. Next up, Raymond Faith. Not expecting much out of you, but we'll see. Medium seventh. Not a good draft. Not a good draft. Can I get like one medium elite out of nowhere that truly makes this all worth it? <laughs> because otherwise, of course, we wasted a lot of potential in next year's draft by not just trading away these picks. I feel like uh, Lee Graham might be our last chance at somebody half decent blunden though as well. Eh, low elite. 62, that's not terrible, especially considering, uh, you know, everybody else that we've selected in this draft. So I guess that's a positive, maybe, kind of. Can we go with that, please? Uh, and Bruce Blunden, the Blundins is going to be our other guy here. And he was top six, right? So we'll, we'll take this goalie here to begin the fifth round. We'll trade away the rest of the picks. And then, I don't know, this might just be a draft episode, or maybe I'll try to go through free agency in the re-sign phase. We're going to take Corbin here, uh, who's medium backup. Right. Well, that went about as poorly as it possibly could have. To the surprise of nobody, I guess. Uh, we only have one pick left in this draft, too. Screw it. We'll make it, and we'll take irons. Why not? Why the hell not? Let's sim to it. You watch. We weren't going to take him. And he will be the best of the bunch. I'm calling it right now. I don't remember what region he played in. Or even if he was a forward. So we're going to have to scroll all the way back down through. Let's see. We have a steal on our hands here. There he is. It is Joe Irons. How tough are you? You're not. All right. And with that, the draft is over. The big moves come in the form of the... I mean, the big-time trade, sending Brady Kachuk. Uh, perhaps controversially, but needing to make sure that we still have the cap space, sending Brady Kachuk to Dallas. Should it have been Brock Besser? Maybe. But the deal is done, and Besser isn't exactly safe either with some of the moves that we still have to make. Oh, boy, the re-sign phase. I mean, the good thing is... We don't really have anything to do in free agency. It's just the re-sign phase and then taking a look at what the team could look like. So we should be able to get through this 
as long as we don't run into any kind of major complications here. Uh, so Gillies, of course, we're going to let go of, and we're going to bank on Gibson or Wolf to be ready. We also need to look at signing Ben DeHaan and Corbin. Defensively, Reimer needs that deal. Gildan, ah, Gildan, I like you, but you're not going to be a top six guy here, and we don't have injuries on in this series, so you can go. We'll set you free. Right wings, Rintoul. We should be okay. I was mainly looking at uh, UFAs. Let's see what we can do with Jack Hughes here, who still doesn't want to sign, and he indeed wants $10 million. 5 by 10 is not bad. He probably won't accept it, but I'm going to send him... Uh, going to send him that offer. Who do we have for UFAs? Rintoul, what are you looking for? It's not too bad. I doubt he'll accept it. Uh, and then for the moment, Ernie, Foley, Spinner, and Stevens. You are all gone. Uh, and we'll see what happens. With the first two, uh, of course, mainly Jack Hughes, and then we'll start sending out offers to some of our RFAs. Of course, not a surprise that the majority of our guys are RFAs. Hugh should be, but he's a creative player, and it's just kind of weird how the game does that. I doubt either accept. Indeed, that's the case. All right. Well, let's actually negotiate then here, shall we? Just try and get this over and done with. Right, slowed, please. $33 million in cap space. Let's see what we can do. Now, Timmons. Wants eight. It's not bad. The 85% trick won't work with him, more than likely. It normally doesn't work at this stage. Three years works for me, though. Let's go eight by three and see if he's good with that. The ever so slight discount. Uh, Wolf. I gotta be honest. I think I'm just gonna let him go. Or actually, I'm not, because I'm not gonna sign Corbin. Uh, so yeah, we'll have Wolf and Ben DeHaan. So, Wolf, never mind. You get to stay, even though you want a one-way deal. Uh, let's go 975. Gibson needs a deal. We'll offer him max money on the two-way. And Ben DeHaan needs to be signed. So, again, Corbin, I'm not even going to bother with. Reimer, I'm going to hold off on because that's a big money move. You know what? I really just want to get the Hughes situation figured out. So, let's go... Again, another one-year deal at 10 mil. So instead of a one-year deal at 9 mil, let's go a one-year deal at 10 mil and see if that's enough to convince him. Again, I'd like for him mid-season to be able to say, like, oh, yeah, sure, I'd love to re-sign, and then that way we can get him on that cheap deal. You know, just keep going with these kind of bridge contracts. So let's see. Wolf is back. Hughes rejected again. Ben DeHaan signed, and Timmons signed. So we did get the slight discount, Gibson, as well. Uh, we did get the slight discount on Timmons, 3x8 or 8x3. Call it as you will. That's a pretty solid deal. Unfortunately, uh, these negotiations with old Jack Hughes aren't going all that well. So, you know what? What if I go... If I got like one year at like ten and a half, I really want to get him on that cheaper deal. And even if he accepts that, we still have 26 mil. So let's go to Reimer. Let's go six by three for Roger Reimer. Olsen, you haven't played a game in the NHL. So I'm going to go two years instead at 1.4 just to save myself a little bit of money. And short-term, Pellick needs a new contract. Again, you haven't played a single NHL game, so we're going to go 9-25, one year for you. Chip Chura is going to be a UFA, so he has to be signed. Max money deal there. Pitt needs to be signed. Just give you the max two-way contract to take care of that. Blunden, probably not going to sign you outright. Graham doesn't need to be signed. Patoni doesn't need to be signed. Irons is kind of shit. Kane's kind of shit. That was a oh, that was a rough, rough go for us. Rintoul. Oh, two and a half. That's a lot for you, but we'll do what we can. Xavier Eddy needs to be signed. Hines, I'm just going to let you go, I think. And from there, we're looking okay. Left wing, of course, we're going to sign Like He's going to be NHL ready. Uh, Siofto doesn't need to be signed yet. Uh, Davies, you know what, we'll, we'll sign Davies, he's worth it, kind of. 
Uh, Lorenz, yeah, maybe we'll hold off on for the moment. And then at center, Kaliev, I think I'm going to ditch you because I don't have much faith in you developing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm probably just going to ditch you. I don't think we would have gotten any compensation for him anyway. And then Pelly, I will let you know. Lyles needs to be signed, though. Lyles need to be signed. Hillen. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll see what the responses are from here. Hoping to get to the start of start of the preseason here, but man, we are approaching an hour already. Uh, which, goddamn, again, how did that happen? Well, it's advanced day. Hope everybody accepts. Uh, like Eddie, Pellick, Lyles, Davies, Olsen, Pitts. Hughes rejected again. Chipchura, Rintoul, Reimer. Perfect. So, basically everybody but Jack Hughes. Which, I mean, we're gonna be able to sign him. It's just... How expensive of a deal is it going to be for a one-year deal to try and get him to re-sign for cheap? So goalies, again, we're fine. Defense, we're looking okay. Uh, Cooperman. Could sign Cooperman. He's already 20. Sign him up. Blunden, again, I'd probably rather just give the time to someone who's a little bit better. Actually, I'd rather, I'd rather sign, like, a veteran just to have the team be better than to give him an opportunity. Seagal and Chow... Don't need to be signed. Left wing. See, Olfato doesn't need to be signed yet. I know there's Roy. Uh, Lorenz, you know what? We'll sign you just because we have plenty of contract spots. Then at center, let's bring back Pelly. Give him a half decent deal. Karen's isn't going to be signed yet. Uh, let's go ahead and offer Hillen a deal. And then it's just Jack Hughes. All right, well, what if I try for the five mil or the five years at 11 mil? You are our number one center. If he accepts that, I'm good with it, even though it's a shitload of money. If that doesn't work, we're going to go pretty much all in on the one-year deal, max money, just to keep him because we're running short on time. Lorenz, Cooperman, Jack Hughes, you're okay. Yeah, it's going to be the one-year deal for sure. We'll go one-year deal, max money. Um... Again, pretty much, if you look at it, 19 million. We we had to kind of move Kachuk because we would have only had 11 million dollars to work with. It it was it was the right move. It was the safe move. Uh, so let's go. Again, you rejected 11. Let's go like 15 million for one season. Leave us a little bit of wiggle room in case we need to sign any free agents. Again, I don't expect any major free agents. Uh, we'll pretty much do what we always do, I'd say, in terms of just adding players, uh, you know, like the Steve Spinners, for example. We've done that for quite a few years now. Let's see what we got. Let's see what's up. Advanced day. Hughes, please accept. Thank you. All right, so Jack Hughes is here. We are good to go. Uh, I mean, if there's anybody on the free agent list now, we pretty much wouldn't be able to afford them, even if it's like a Johnny Goodrow or a... Kachuk or whatever, even though we know Kachuk isn't uh, on an expiring deal. So let's sim to next season. We'll take a look at what the team is shaping up to be, and we'll call it quits at that point. So all in all, uh, you know, the draft took a little bit longer than expected. That's just kind of what happens. It's kind of the deal. Them's the breaks, as they say. And, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Could have maybe chopped it up a little bit, but, you know. Every time every, every time in the past, I was like, yeah, maybe I should chop up the draft. And people were like, well, how would we know if you screwed up and that you didn't draft a prospect who wasn't there? Half the fun's making fun of you when you screw up. So I'm like, yeah, well, fair points. I'll show the entire draft, which we did. Not everyone's cup of tea, but you should be used to it at this point. You should be. And if you're not, get used to it, because damn it, I like talking until my jaw feels like it's going to fall off, like right now. And I like talking uh, in a room that's 90 friggin' degrees, because summer sucks. God, it's just the worst. Uh, let's take a look at the team, shall we? Let's take a look at the team really quickly. So goaltenders. Uh, we'll probably have... Eh, it could be Wolf or Gibson. We have options. Maybe Gibson would do well with another... Uh, Season of seasoning uh, in the AHL. I don't know. We can make that decision later. 
defense. We have a little bit of uh we have a little bit of depth here, don't we? Don't we? So Ald could still be in the AHL. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah, we'll address that in the next episode. The top four is locked up, but it's just a matter of who is in that bottom six, or, you know, the second pairing. Who are the fifth and sixth defensemen? Blunden, Olsen, Pelic, Valesi, Chipchura, and Ald. Uh, just to get you a look at uh, everyone's attributes uh, and potentials, which, I mean, really, the first two we looked at are probably the two that are going to win out, I would say, with them being medium elites. So I think that's going to be our defense this season. And then forward-wise, uh, we're still looking good. Wallstrom, uh, well, not Wallstrom, Besser could go if necessary. Uh, Murray Altshuler, again, could benefit from fourth-line time this season. But otherwise, I mean, that right there is what we're shaping up to be. This is the team based off of best overalls at the moment. Which, you know, I kind of like the way it looks. Except if we bump up Redmond, have Paling there, and uh, Rintoul is also a third line guy. Different combinations, but I still like Hughes, Middlestat, Paling for center depth. That's insane. If we get rid of Brock Besser still, uh, Murray Altshuler is pretty much the guy who's going to be called up. Aside from that, we don't really have a go to call up option. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, if we decide to keep Besser, someone like a Yandel or a Frederick, probably Trent Frederick would be moved or just sent down to make room for Altshuler. So it's pretty much the, the big question here is, do we focus on trying to get guys like Altshuler into the lineup and then defensively, like, there's really nobody that we can trade for. So it's it, we might as well just leave these guys here. <laughs> we might as well. Uh, and just hope that, you know, next year's draft, we have the ability to trade for some half-decent prospects because as you saw in this episode, we don't really have any options. So with that, you kind of get the, the lay of the land, the look at what's going on with this team. We're going to call it an episode for now, aside from a few minor tweaks and changes, maybe signing some AHL depth. We're good to go. Uh, this team is looking ridiculous in terms of assets right now. Uh, it drops off somewhat steadily towards the end. But for the most part, I really like the way that we're looking right now. And we'll see whether or not we can defend our title in the next episode. So with that, thank you for watching. You know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe, share, and notification bells, and do all the things all the time. Tell people. Tell them what's going on here. My slow descent into madness over a three-year span. It's, 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 it's good. It's good. Thank you for watching. I love you all. Goodbye for now.